What's up guys? Orifa is here. Today we'll take a look at the story of a game Bioshock 1. Bioshock 1 is a first-person shooter video game developed by Irrational Games and released in 2007. The game is set in the fictional underwater dystopia of Rapture in 1960. Players take on the role of Jack who must explore Rapture and fight through holders of enemies to complete objectives, while using a variety of tools, weapons and abilities to do so. But I'll tell you all about it later in this video. The game begins with our protagonist Jack flying to his parents. He is looking at the picture of his family and the letter from his parents, but suddenly the plane begins to shake and falls into the ocean. Jack wakes up already underwater and surfacing. He sees that he is near the lighthouse, where he is headed. Having descended to the lower floor of the lighthouse, we see a small bathysphere climbed into it and pulling the level. The door closes and Jack begins to dive under the water. In the process, players are presented with a screen on which a video is projected to bring them up to speed. In it, a man named Andrew Ryan speaks to us. He expresses his frustration with life, saying that there is no place on the planet where a truly talented person can create without being oppressed by the state. For this reason, Andrew decided to build his own utopia city at the bottom of the ocean, called Rapture, which is just before the player eyes. As we approach the town, the radio inside the bathysphere picks up a conversation between two dudes, from which we learn that some mutants are about to appear, and on reaching the station we see a mutant take out a man and then try to break into Jack's bathysphere, but it gets electrocuted and escapes. Then a certain atlas contacts us over the radio, saying that his task is to keep the main character alive, and then he will now be our guide in this city. Upon exiting the bathysphere, Jack sees that something strange is going on the station. Only devastation all around. A little way back, we again encounter a mutant, which again tries to attack Jack, but it is spotted by a flying machine gun turret, which makes it retreat again. Then Atlas, uttering the phrase, would you kindly, asks Jack to pick up a wrench, so he can clear the rubble. In the meantime, I'll take a second of your time. Would you kindly like this video? I hope it worked. Man chooses Slave Obis. And you, my dear viewer, have a choice. Subscribe to the channel or not. Leave a comment under this video or remain a lazy ass. It's all up to your own free will. Ok, let's go on. After clearing the rubble, Jack climbs up to the stairs, where in the small lobby he shows the mutant who's the deity. In the same room there is a wending machine called Gatherer's Gaddle, which sells plasmids. Plasmids in Bioshock are injections that give you super powers. Of the options we have the ability to shoot fire and electricity from the hands and telekinesis. The ability to move objects with the power of thought. Jack injects himself with plasmid electroshock and it causes him to have a powerful feed, as a result of which he falls off the balcony and loses consciousness, after which two mutants approaches him looking for Adam. Adam is a substance produced from a special kind of selfish living in the ocean near Rapture. Adam allows you to perform various manipulations with the human genes, thus approving them. It was with the help of Adam, Rapture scientists learned how to create plasmids. However, in the addition to their superpowers, plasmids are also produces side effects, which included addition to Adam, but uncontrolled consumption of Adam leads to physical and mental mutations. This is how mutants are created in Rapture. However, these two mutants do not have time to harm Jack, as they hear heavy footsteps approaching and immediately scramble away. After a while we see the mascot of the game, Big Daddy, approaching Jack. Big Daddy is a genetically altered man in a diving suit, with a drill instead of his right hand. They were created to guard the so-called Little Sisters, who arises in special laboratories from an early age to walk the streets of Rapture and collect Adam from that residence. Sis approaches Jack and wants to pierce him with a needle, but she notices that he is still alive, so she leaves him and walks away. After recovering, Jack, guided by Atlas, moves on for the city, until in the elevator Atlas tells him that he has a little problem. His wife and son are locked in the docks and aren't able to get out on their own. Atlas asks Jack to go there and rescue his family. On the way to the docks, Atlas tells Jack that the plasmids caused people to go crazy and kill each other for Adam, causing Rapture to be plugged into internecine battles. Jack also learns another unusual feature of plasmids. They can transfer the memory of one person to another, so we can sometimes see the memories of some inhabitants. Walking a little further, Jack sees a little sister being attacked by a mutant, gathering Adam, but she managed to call out for her daddy, who literally drills the attacker. On reaching the dogs called Neptune's Gifts, Jack sees 
that the gates are closed because of the alarm, so he follows Atlas's advice to the medical pavilion, from which Jack should be able to get to the Neptune's gifts. But before entering the pavilion, Rapture's creator Andrew Ryan himself gets in touch with us, reproaching Jack for being an undercover agent and hinting that he is not welcome in this town. Immediately Jack is attacked by mutants, but he manages to run into the airlock and into the medical pavilion, where he encounters a new problem. The emergency exit turns out to be locked. Atlas tells him that in order for the door to open, we need to get the key of the head of the medical department, Dr. Steinman. The problem, however, is that Steinman has turned into a totally screwed up psychopath with a fixation on surgery. The doc was trying to create the perfect body, so he constantly managed to freak out his patients. Jack finds the doctor in the surgical ward, but he manages to escape by blowing a passage's way behind him. So now we have to walk around the whole department, looking for a way to get to Steinman. Here we find two new types of plasmids, fire and telekinesis. We also manage to hear Andrew Ryan, who notifies us that there is an Adam equivalent bounty on Jack's head. Now every mutant wants to destroy our protagonist. Jack, using telekinesis, directs the bomb dropped by the mutants into the rubble and first enters the operating room of the doctor, who was just revoking his next victim, but noticing Jack decided to get rid of him. However, he fails and Jack takes the key from him, heading for the exit. On the way, he sees Little Sis being attacked by the mutant who killed her big daddy, but at the moment the mutant gets a bullet from a woman standing on the balcony. This is Dr. Tenenbaum. She is the one who has been working on developing a way to create the Little Sisters. Atlas tells Jack to kill the girl and take the Adam, but Tenenbaum asks him not to harm the girl and gives Jack a special plasmid to cleanse the Little Sister from the Adam's influence. Depending on your choices over the course of the game, your ending will be determined. If you choose to take Adam away from the sisters, you will get a bad ending. However, in this video I'll only cover the canonical ending, so Jack clears the sisters. Next, as the game progresses, we will still account it the sisters accompanied by the daddies, and in order to save the little ones, we will first need to get rid of the daddies gathering them. Eventually, Jack finally makes it to the exit of the pavilion and goes to Neptune's gifts. There is a fish factory owned by a local businessman named Frank Fontaine. He was quite enterprising, so after arriving at Rapture, he managed to set up a smuggling business just through the fish factory. And with part of proceeds, he began to finance Dr. Tenenbaum's researches, which resulted in the Adam and all that ensued. Atlas tells Jack that his family is in the bathysphere at the fish factory and he head there. Jack knocks on the locked door, behind which is Peach Wilkins. He says he will only open the door to the fish factory if Jack brings him a photo scanner. At this moment, Jack is attacked by a new mutant, and having dealt with him, Peach gives us a grenade launcher, stating that if he finds out about Jack and Fontaine's connection, it will be hard for the hero. After which, we are contacted by Atlas, who says that Peach is just a paranoid old man, and Frank Fontaine himself has been dead for two years. Andrew Ryan suspending Fontaine of smuggling, sends his security expert to investigate. But all the smugglers caught were more afraid of Fontaine than Ryan, so no one cracked. To end the Fontaine story right away, here is what I am going to tell you. One of the dancers at a local strip club named Jasmine Jolin had, so to speak, romantic relationships with Andrew Ryan, after which she found herself pregnant. Upon hearing such news, Dr. Tannenbaum bought the fetus back from Jasmine. But when Ryan found out about it, he was furious, because Tannenbaum researches was sponsored by Fontaine, and since Ryan's relationship with Fontaine was already strained to say the least, Andrew slightly lost his mind and beat Jasmine with a water pipe. The main reason for such an aggressive reaction to this fact is not so much grief over the loss of an hair, but anger over the fact that Fontaine now has Ryan's DNA, and since everything in Rapture responds to Ryan's DNA, Fontaine has access to the entire city. Well, Ryan with the help of his men eliminated Fontaine. And this is the end of Frank Fontaine's story. Having found a photo scanner, with which we can take pictures of mutants and study their weaknesses, we bring this camera to Peach. He asks us to put all the weapons in the air tube in front of the entrance. He then lets Jack inside the freezer. However, Peach is totally QQ because of his paranoia, so Jack has to fend off the old man's attacks with plasmids and a key. In the end, Jack deals with the freak, gets his stuff and moves on to save Atlas's family. Upon reacting the control panel, we are warned by Ryan that if Jack presses the bottom, there will be 
dire consequences. Despite the threats, we press the button and let Atlas into the Batisphere. He goes to rescue his wife and son from their confinement, to which Ryan directs mutants to him and we run to Atlas's aid. But Ryan blows up Atlas's family Batisphere right before our eyes. Atlas, had broken, tells Jack to run to Arcadia Park, which produces oxygen for all Rapture. Atlas, who has lost his family, asks Jack to get to Ryan and avenge him for everything. Through the park we head for the subway, but Ryan decides to stop the hero in the rather strange way. He releases a poisonous gas into the park in attempt to destroy the trees. Atlas asks Jack to find a way to get rid of the poison, as Ryan stupidly will get absolutely everyone in Rapture killed. Not far from the park is the laboratory of Julia Langford, who has been planting this way trees. She says she can save the trees, but she will need a sample of one particular rose. Upon arriving at the specified location, Jack finds the rose and hastily heads back to the lab, where he hands the rose to Julia by pneumatic tube. She opens the door to her lab and we go into her office, but Andrew Ryan has guessed our plans and launched a poisonous gas into Julia's office, cursing her to suffocate. But before she dies, she manages to write on the glass the code to her safe, in which Jack finds the recipe Julia developed for a drug to save dead plants. Lens. Jack finds the necessary ingredients and returns to Langford's lab, where he prepares the drug for spiring. At this point, Ryan sends mutants into the lab, which Jack successfully separates, then sprays the drug in Arcadia, thereby saving the plants from death. Then we head to Bathysphere in the Rapture subway and swim to the entertainment center, where we will have to make a transfer to the next station and from there swim to Ryan. On the way, Atlas tells us that this place belongs to an artist named Sander Cohen, who like everyone else in this town has long since said goodbye to his sanity. Upon arriving at the station, we see that our Bathysphere suddenly closes and we are approached by Sander Cohen, who is very happy to have a new visitor. He jams Jack's connection, so that neither Atlas nor Ryan can interfere with the entertainment entertainment of the deranged artist and asks Jack to go into the theater, where we see one of Cohen's students, Kyle Fitzpatrick, chained to a booty-trapped grand piano. Fitzpatrick tries to play, but fails and tries to get up when suddenly the piano explodes. Cohen asks us to take a picture of his student's body, saying that Fitzpatrick is now at the highest of his fame and asks us to bring the picture to the atrium. Once in the atrium, we see Cohen's quadriptic with picture frames. Cohen says that this quadriptic is his last masterpiece and because of it, he will be remembered even after his death. Jack frames the picture for which Cohen awards us with a crossbow and sends us to take three more pictures of his former students whom he was disappointed in. He sends us to the Poseidon Plaza, where his students reside. After dealing with all three, Jack takes their pictures and frames them. After the quadriptych is fully assembled, Cohen himself comes down to us, thanking Jack for his help in creating this masterpiece and unleashes the hero to go on. Jack boards the Bathysphere and takes it to Hippasta's lab, where the core powering the entire Rapture and Andrew Ryan's office is located. Atlas again asks us to go in and get rid of Ryan. Unfortunately, the door turns out to be blocked and can only be opened by resetting the core. Jack finds out from the dictaphone records that one of the Rapture scientists has already started assembling a device capable of causing the core reset, but he didn't have time to finish it, so we have to look for the necessary parts and then we personally assemble the device. Jack enters the elevator and heads to the core. On the way, Ryan contacts us, trying to turn Jack against Atlas, saying that eventually Atlas will betray the hero, but Jack ignores his words and installs the device on the core, thus causing a reboot of the core. The door to Ryan's office is now open. Jack enters the Rapture Control Center, where Ryan tells him that now that Andrew sees Jack in the flesh, he won't have the heart to kill the hero and cause Jack his biggest disappointment, triggering the Rapture self-destruct process, pointing out that he can't let Atlas take over the city. Atlas asks Jack to go to Ryan and get the genetic key from him to stop the rapture self-destruction. Along the way, Jack finds himself in a room where Ryan was trying to find out who Jack is, eventually coming to the conclusion that Jack is his son, namely the very child Tenenbaum brought back from Jasmine. There are also two notes named by Dr. Sushong, who worked on researches into the mental control of people. From these notes, we learn that the fetus Tenenbaum brought from Jasmine Jolene was subject to growth acceleration and had the body of a 90 years old boy at the age 1. And we also learn that Sushonk served into Jack's mind a special trigger command that allows him to be controlled by just saying the phrase would you kindly. And as we already know, Atlas was very active in using this phrase when communicating with Jack. Next we go to Ryan. Jack finds him in his office playing golf. He tells us that none of the main characters' memories are real. There was no farm he grew up on. With 
his family and no family either, and the plane from the beginning of the game is far from randomly crashing in the middle of the Atlantic, just near Rapture. Jack hijacked it and landed it at the right coordinates. Ryan opens the door to his office and demonstrates to Jack the power of the phrase would you kindly, then gives him a stick in his hand and with the word that a man chooses and the slave obeys, orders Jack to kill him. Jack, unable to resist his childhood trigger, kills his father. Then he takes his genetic key and Atlas orders Jack to disable the rapture self-destruction. When Jack complies with his request as well, Atlas decides to confess that no Atlas actually existed, but that the man hiding under this name was Frank Fontaine. He faked his own death in order to strike from somewhere Ryan couldn't have expected at all. Now he doesn't need Jack anymore, as Fontaine now runs rapture and decides to get rid of Jack by sending turrets after him. However, Dr. Tenenbaum sends the sister to save the hero, they show him the way to the vent, in which Jack loses consciousness. Our protagonist wakes up already in Doctor's hideout. While he was unconscious, Tenenbaum managed to take some of the control of him, and now the phrase would you kindly doesn't have the same strong effect on the protagonist. However, Fontaine is still able to control Jack a little, so in order to be completely free of the trigger's influence, Doc sends the hero to Dr. Sushong's apartment, who was in charge of Jack's mental control. On the way, Fontaine contacts us and orders Jack to go to the nearest big daddy, but noticing that the phrase would you kindly no longer works, he applies another command, which causes Jack to gradually reduce his maximum level reserve. Upon reacting to Strong's apartment, Jack discovers a recording there in which the doctor says that Fontaine was worried about being tricked and so asked Sushong to manufacture a drug that frees the man from mental control, called Sample 192. Tenenbaum contacts us and, recognizing the familiar name, tells us that she worked for Sushong and stole a flask of the drug from him, but had no idea what it was or what it was for. The drug in question is stored at Tenenbaum's home, so Jack heads there, where he sees that her house has been ransacked. Doc assumes that such a necessary item mutants could have taken to Fontaine's apartment. The elevator to his apartment is locked with a code block, but by a fluke we find the corpse of the dude who was following Fontaine, and in his records we find the code. Inside, Jack finds a tape in which Fontaine Fontaine tells us that Ryan decided to gather the elite of the world, the most talented and smartest people on the planet in one place, where they could do what they love without fear or censorship and standardization. However, he didn't take into account the fact that simple professionals are needed, because someone has to keep order and clean lines. Fontaine, on the other hand, was well aware of this, so he set up a home for the poor, in which he helped impoverished people, who in turn were willing to die for him. In the end, it was this tactic that helped Fontaine rise above Ryan. In Fontaine's office, Jack finds sample 192 after all and accepts it. Things don't go so smoothly, however, he gets a side effect. Sometimes the plasmids don't listen to the hero, so sometimes Jack is left without the ability to choose the right plasmid, and the whole thing is that the dose of sample 192 wasn't enough for a machine like Jack. Tenenbaum suggested that since Sushong made the drug, perhaps another batch can be found at his clinic. When we arrive at the specified place, we see the corpse of a man nailed to the table with Big Daddy's drill. And from the record nearby, we can learn that this man is Dr. Sushong himself, who dies during an experiment to control Big Daddy. This is also where we find another dose of Sample 192, thanks to which we are finally able to get back at Fontaine for everything. Tenenbaum says that Fontaine is now at Promenade to speak, that's where Jack is headed. When we get to the right place, we see Fontaine running away from Jack to the test site, closing the door behind him, and that door can only be opened by the little sister. To do this we have to turn Jack into Big Daddy. First we need to get into the rooms where the future little sisters were held. There we find three bottles of pheromones. Then we go to the other wing of the complex and find the voice modifier. The last component is the daddy's suit. But even this is not too difficult. Having reincarnated into Big Daddy, Jack calls sis out of the pipe and together with her heads inside the testing ground. At the end of the range, just before the elevator, we release little sister and take away the needle she used to suck the Adam out of the corpses. We get in the elevator and go to the top floor of the building, where we see Fontaine, whose body Adam has turned into a machine. The battle itself with him is quite simple. After all three phases, Fontaine smacks Jack in the face and starts to rant. 
which gives time for the little sisters to gather and pile on the slowing fontaine, stabbing him with their needles. Having dealt with the boss, Jack gets up from the floor and one of the little sisters approaches him with the genetic key to the rapture. But he refuses this future and leaves rapture with the girls in the body sphere. Now these very girls have a future. Finally, they will be able to live as a normal human life. And the end we all shown that our main character was respected right up to his death. The girls throw their already mademoiselles were with him even when Jack was on his deathbed. Credits. To be honest, I don't want to rate this masterpiece. Yes, the game has a lot of frankly batshit crazy moments, but on the other hand, it also has a lot of positive things starting from the plot and the idea and finishing with small details on the locations. If you haven't played it yet, add it to your list. The game is worthwhile and I 100% recommend it to you to play. The game has a lot of references, easter eggs, and subplots, from the class struggle to the consumer culture. Still, the most interesting thing is that I can't assess him as a full-fledged character, because Jack is just a puppet in the hands of other actors. Almost his entire journey has been lined with the phrase, would you kindly, but that's the point. The players, like Jack, are unable to move away from the prescribed plot, but that's not what today is about. If I try to tell you absolutely everything, a couple of hours will come out for sure. Plus, relying on just the first part of the story is silly, because all three parts are interconnected. Ok, I am going to stop here. I don't know what the next video will be about yet. Maybe I'll go back to assessing or maybe I'll continue with Bioshock. I don't have any plans yet. However, thank you very much for the likes, subscriptions and comments. It really helps the development of the channel. And if you haven't liked it, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you wish of course. Thank you all. Good luck to you.